doesn't increase employment or earnings, but it, but it does abruptly cut people off and people who are very vulnerable who fall through the cracks. I don't know, Ms. Moore, if you wanted to add something. Thank you so much for lifting up this. And I was eagerly trying to hear who Mr. Arrington thought were these able-bodied people. And he referenced a commercial that ran in Wisconsin. And I saw this young white boy who was playing video games saying, Mom, bring me some more chips. Why should I work when I get free stuff? You know, that person doesn't exist any more than the welfare queen does. The non-financial criteria for being eligible for TANF, number one is that you have kids. That white boy didn't have any kids at home with his mama playing video games. He was probably some rich entitled somebody uh, who didn't have to, um, you know, he was, a, he was somebody acting for a commercial. And they deliberately aired it in my state, in Wisconsin. And if such a person existed, that able-bodied young man, um, he would not be eligible for TANF. Mr. McGovern raised a good point. Most of the people who receive TANF are children. And they're not just children. They're children under the age of 12. And to the extent most of the TANF cases are child-only cases where you do have grandmas raising their grandchildren because of catastrophic problems that have occurred uh, within those families. Um, this, these able-bodied people who are capable of going to work, if they were able to go to work at a job that provide them with a sufficient amount of income not to need TANF benefits, they wouldn't be at your door. They would not have educational deficits, they would not have, you know, problems with child care, they wouldn't have multiple children that they had to tend uh, to with limited income. The person that you are describing does not exist. This able-bodied person who does not work does not exist. As Mr. McGovern has indicated, 80% of the people who receive SNAP are working either the year before or after they are no longer receiving SNAP. If you live in the state of Wisconsin or any of these states that provide Medicaid, and you know many states like Wisconsin have not expanded Medicaid, unfortunately, um, then you will find that a person who works for $7.50 an hour, 40 hours a week, if there's, there's no such job as that, nobody hires somebody part-time to work in the kinds of places that we saw Mr. Smith and I went to Atlanta uh, to a field hearing, and our witness talked about these wild animals don't want to come to work because we give them free stuff. And um, this, this person happened to be uh, the owner of a bar restaurant grill, and he admitted he doesn't provide them with health care. He doesn't provide them with full-time work. He doesn't provide them with sick leave. And when I spoke with him and his wife, their response was, well, we don't have health care either. Begrudging these people health care. If you worked every single day, five days a week, and earned the minimum wage, all that would get you is to be ineligible for Medicaid. And so what I am saying, that it is immoral for the federal government to design a trapezoid-type benefit where no matter how hard these people work, they will only be available if they need assistance to the low-wage workforce, to those employers whose business model requires them to exploit people. Seasonal jobs, immigrants, um, you know, I don't know how you wait tables or work bar when the bar, you know, when the owner calls you at any time of the night and say, can you get in here in 30 minutes? And so this able-bodied person that you're talking about does not exist. Many of these people, as Mr. McGovern said, deserve to be reviewed by Social Security for, for hidden disabilities. Many of them have not uh, attained a high school diploma or a GED. But yet, 
the proposals that you're making in this program to rescind some of the, uh, to claw back and to stop states from putting in their own maintenance efforts money to try to help people off, get off welfare are things that you want to stop them from doing. We had one witness in our committee that talked about a person that they were so proud of helping them become a CNA. But the fact is, is that that organization got dinged because they kept her in a training program too long uh, and it counted against their workforce participation rate. That if you truly try to help people get out of poverty, then you won't be able to meet the work participation rate. You talked about the two states, California and New York, who, um, who give people small checks, maybe $10 of TANF, so that they can uh, include them on their workforce participation rate because they are, in fact, working. California and New York have state constitutions that require them to help people. And... You know, I don't know if you've checked lately, but it costs a lot of money to live in places like New York and California. So when they give people a $10 check, it is so that they can qualify for SNAP. That they're, all they're trying to do is to give people, a, a, you know, probably the, the, the only safety net program that, that is more universal than, than, say, TANF. They're trying to help people in very hard budgeting times that are, in fact, working. So this white boy that you saw on that commercial, I'm surprised you saw Wisconsin commercials, quite frankly. I saw them. I don't know what you were doing looking at them. Maybe you placed them there. But there is no such person as that able-bodied white boy telling his mama to bring him some potato chips while he plays video games that is that is eligible for free stuff. He's not getting Medicaid. He's not getting SNAP. He's not getting food stamps. That person does not exist. So, so let, me, let me wrap this up here. Uh, may I just? Sure, you uh, may, yeah. Are you suggesting that there aren't any white families or white children? I, 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 I talked about the white boy. No, no, West Virginia, places, I, 